about the views, it's about the clickbait. I'm more of an old soul, if that makes sense. So that goes to the new generation who wants to post everything. You're gonna look back at this in a, in a little bit and just laugh at it, honestly. Since Jordan Poole joined the Washington Wizards in a trade last summer, it's been basically the worst case scenario for all involved in the nation's capital. In the first year of a hefty four-year extension, Jordan Poole has been a massive disappointment. His season has been largely defined by a series of meme-worthy moments and failing to reach even the more modest expectations for him and the team. His poor play has been so rancid that it stands out during what could be the worst season in the history of the Washington Wizards. And believe me, that's saying something. A benching after the the all-star break threatened to cement his season as a total failure, but recently, Jordan Poole's play has begun to noticeably improve. He's had his best stretch of the season after his move to the bench. In fact, his strong play continued after he returned to the starting lineup as the Wizards had one of their best weeks of the season. It seemed unlikely for a while, but there's a chance that Poole's season could actually include important positives that help the Wizards in the long run. So before we get to the content, we're currently racing my football channel microphone to a million subscribers. Subscribers. We have like a 38,000 subscriber lead. And now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. Look right over here, you'll see all of these wonderful human beings that have been able to make some money by playing prize picks. And I give away my picks for free each and every day on my Instagram at the Flight Mike and Snapchat at Flight Mike Snap. And right now they're hooking up my subscribers fat when you use my promo code Flight Mike when you sign up for prize picks. And thank you, prize picks for the sponsor. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Last summer, when the Washington Wizards traded Chris Tapps Porzingis and Bradley Beal, they officially turned the page to a new chapter of Washington basketball. After going 35 and 47 and finishing 12th in the East, Wizards mercifully decided that bottoming out and entering a long overdue rebuild would be the best for the team's long-term future. As part of their busy offseason, they traded the briefly acquired Chris Paul to the Golden State Warriors in exchange for Jordan pool and two other prospects along with a first and a second round pick. Poole's arrival in Washington provided him with a lot of new opportunities. First off, a new environment was critical after dealing with the aftermath of Draymond Green punching him through all of last season. Plus, the rebuilding Washington Wizards offered Poole a chance to start and play a much more critical role on their offense than on a team largely built around Steph Curry. As a cherry on top, Poole would be getting paid a lot more. After playing a vital role during Golden State's 2022 championship run, Jordan Poole predicted his future, saying to Andrew Wiggins, Hey, you about to get a bag. Hey, you about to get a bag. No, 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 no. You about to get a bag. We about to get a bag. We about to get a bag. The Warriors signed Jordan Poole to a four-year extension worth $140 million. Poole would average a career high in points and assists while playing in all 82 games. But Draymond's punch overshadowed his entire season and he couldn't replicate his postseason magic in 2023. Despite seemingly committing to him for the next four years, the Warriors elected to trade him less than a year later, before the extension even kicked in. Now, that's usually a notable red flag, but if you think about it, Washington didn't have much to lose. Outside Outside of re-signing Kyle Kuzma that offseason, the Wizards weren't paying out any significant long-term contracts. In fact, a huge goal of the season would be determining which of their recent draft picks they'd eventually be handing out extensions to. Plus, the Washington Wizards could have seen Golden State's financial crunch as a chance to acquire a player entering his mid-20s with all-star potential. The Warriors may have traded Poole simply because they had a new front office who realized that Poole was a luxury they couldn't afford on the league's most expensive roster. And if Poole wasn't good, the Wizards were going to be bad anyway. The risk was purely financial, and while having a potentially oversized contract on the books for multiple seasons is never ideal, it's not like many external free agents are clamoring to sign with the Wizards anyways. But even with all the risks Washington considered, their worst nightmare would soon unfold as the season went on. Pool was bad, often laughingly so. Same with the Wizards. A little over halfway through the season, they fired head coach Wes Unsell Jr. after a 7-36 start, replacing him with interim head coach Brian Keefe. That did little to stop the Jordan Poole meme machine from churning. We've covered multiple junctures of the Jordan Poole experience this season on the channel, and there are a few players that have underperformed on their contract to the degree that he has while also providing basketball moments that border on hilarity. The low points 
seem to come shortly before the All-Star break when Jordan Poole scored zero points and got booed by his home crowd after fouling out during a February loss to the Cleveland Cavaliers. That performance, along with many others, convinced Keefe to make a critical decision in the starting lineup. From that point forward, Jordan Poole would come off of the bench after the All-Star break in order to increase minutes for rookie Bilal Koulibaly, a move that Jordan Poole was openly unhappy about. This seemed to cement his status as a disappointment, something that seemed only a matter of time after it became clear that the Washington Wizards viewed Jordan Poole as a trade piece and not so much as a franchise player. But Poole began to thrive in his bench role with double-digit scoring nights to begin Washington's post-All-Star slate. He scored 31 points in a late February loss to the Cavs, a significant improvement from the zero points he scored in the last meeting. After previously getting booed, Jordan Poole was applauded for his performance. After the game, he lamented the team's tough season, but also expressed optimism for the future. I mean, I really want to go and play well each and every night of the fans. You know what I'm saying? It's been, uh, it's been a season, but it's going to come. It's going to come. So when it does come, better see everybody in there standing up. And a couple of games later, Jordan Poole had another big game off the bench, this time dropping a season-high 34 points off of an efficient 50% shooting along with 7 assists against the Los Angeles Lakers while the Wizards lost. Poole helped them remain competitive all the way to the final buzzer. As he continued to show signs of turning the corner, Poole further acknowledged his inconsistent season, but he also continued to look to the future while describing how he's been able to block out the noise during the especially difficult times. I'm more of an old so that makes sense. So that goes to the new generation who wants to post everything. It's about the views, it's about the clickbait, it's about like making fun of people online, right? That's just what's hot, that's what's new, that's what's trendy right now. I've never really been that type of guy. Um, so I just come in, I get my work in. Uh, great teammate, try to help my, help my teammates get better. Um, to be a good person. At the end of the day, that's just gonna show. My talent's gonna show. Um, the hard work is always gonna get put in and I'm just trying to be a good example for it. Um, those who go through tough times, I mean, it comes with every, everybody goes through tough times, um, but it makes us stronger. We grow from it. We learn from it. Um, we're going to look back at this in a, in a little bit and just laugh at it, honestly. Two games later, Jordan Poole was at it again. This time he dropped 32 points against the Utah Jazz while posting more strong shooting numbers. In his next game against the Orlando Magic, he had another quality shooting night and scored 26 points while dishing out five assists. It was clear that the plan was working. Jordan Poole's roll off of the bench was providing a spark, just like it had when he was on the Warriors. In mid-March, he hit another 10 shots from the floor in a 25-point effort in a loss to the red-hot Houston Rockets and his 12th consecutive game off of the bench. However, soon after, the Wizards' tenuous point guard situation would completely change Jordan Poole's status in the lineup once again. And this time, it would change everything. Washington entered the season with only two experienced point guards on the roster, Tyus Jones and DeLon Wright. Wright, who was on the last year of a two-year contract, agreed to a buyout after the trade deadline before signing with the Miami Heat. That left Tyus Jones, who was also on the last year of a two-year contract, but he was ruled out with a back injury that kept him out since the middle of March. In stepped Jordan Poole to fill the void as he returned to the starting lineup, and everybody was expecting a disaster. But this time, it was significantly different because of one unique change. You see, Jordan Poole's typical position was shooting guard, but as the team's starting point guard, in his first game back as a starter, Jordan Poole led the team with eight assists. In the next game against the Boston Celtics, that number dropped to four assists. But he had another excellent shooting night, finishing with 31 points on 12 of 19 shooting. A pair of subpar shooting nights followed, but afterwards he had his second double-double of the season, scoring 18 points and tied a career high with 12 assists and a victory over Toronto. In the next game, Jordan Poole scored 23 points and handed out five assists and a victory over the Chicago Bulls as the Wizards won three consecutive games for the first time all season. But in the next game, Jordan Poole found another gear in perhaps his best performance of the season. Poole scored a season-high 38 points while setting a career high with 15 made field goals on 24 attempts. His spectacular all-around game also included seven rebounds and eight assists. While the Wizards lost in overtime to Brooklyn, it was clear that this had been the team's best four-game stretch all season, and it was with Jordan Poole playing point guard. After the game, Poole called point guard his natural position and explained in great detail why the lineup changes helped him become more effective. Coach Keefe said after the game that they have a lot of trust in you running the point. Do you feel like you running, and you kind of answered this, but do you feel like you running the point kind of galvanized the entire team and lift everybody up given how good you are ball handling? Yeah, um, I'm a winner passer as well. 
Um, of course, I want to be aggressive. Of course, I want to score. But, you know, I'm trying to win the game at the end of the day. So if I see a teammate that's open or if I can find a way to create an advantage to get an easy bucket for my teammate, I think that's what um, I'm trying to do just as much as be aggressive and score the ball. Constantly seeing that over and over and over um, throughout the course of the game, last couple of games, has been something that um, has been used for us. And uh, I think everybody else is also starting to kind of um, figure out ways to kind of play with one another. Prior to the All-Star break, Jordan Poole's numbers were comically terrible, with even his shot attempts seeing a decrease from his last season in Golden State. Since the All-Star break, the numbers have told a different story, where Jordan Poole's volume and efficiency saw noticeable increases. Poole has scored 30 points in a game three times before the All-Star break. After the break, he scored more than 30 points five times. This positive development won't change Washington's fortunes this season. The current roster was not constructed to be a good team. Even if Poole had become an All-Star this year, year, it still would have been an uphill climb at best for the Wizards to make the playoffs. But Poole's improvement could be massive for the team's big picture plans, with Tyus Jones potentially leaving in free agency. Washington will be examining a variety of options for their starting point guard. At the very least, Poole's recent stretch has forced him into the conversation. Even more importantly, his ability to bounce back could greatly benefit their stable of recent draft picks. Poole has been criticized all season for his disappointing Washington Wizards tenure, and yet he still found a way to have a positive stretch before the tough season comes to a close. He has openly stated that he's comfortable in his own skin, and he's fine with being the league's meme king. Same with Kyle Kuzma, who's been unapologetically himself throughout the years with his fashion choices. It made sense to see this behavior from two guys who've already won a championship and secured large contracts. But Poole has shown an ability to get through his brutal early season performances to eventually play consistently at a high level. The Wizards are hoping that level of play and perseverance rubs off on their less experienced players, who will undoubtedly face more difficult seasons before the team becomes a consistent winner again. It's only a slice of the season, and it won't change his bloated contract, nor will it change the fact that Poole has one of the five worst defensive ratings in the league, and is just outside of the top 10 in worst player efficiency rating. But the ability to essentially take the hit publicly for his and the Wizards' bad season, only to mentally recover and play this well, shows something to franchise keepers like Denny Avdia, Corey Kispert, and Bilal Koulibaly. Poole's early season struggles notwithstanding, the Wizards have been largely out of the national spotlight, thanks in part to other bad teams. The Pistons lost a record 28 consecutive games and owned the league's worst record. The Spurs have a rookie that is already must-see TV in Victor Webanyama. Poole has essentially soaked up all the negative attention in Washington while their prospects develop in relative peace and quiet. And at the end of the day, Poole, as well as Kuzma, was a critical contributor to a championship-winning team. There's still special NBA talent in there. While his first season may be labeled as a disappointment overall, his recent stretch offers hope that as the Washington Wizards undergo their long road back to relevance, Jordan Poole can still be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. Let me know in the comment section down below, could everything just change for Jordan Poole? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.